Hello everyone, I'm Sahil and welcome back to the channel. So yesterday we saw a huge uh, drop in uh, Chinese stocks, uh, all of the Chinese stocks and uh, um, I've been uh, getting a lot of uh, comments on my JD video since I have already initiated a coverage if I may say that I've initiated a coverage in J uh, on JD so I wanted to address the crash uh, and also talk about what happened uh, what's what's causing it and also JD is releasing their uh, their Q1 earnings uh, on 19th of May so we're gonna we're gonna look into what is expected out of uh, that earnings and uh, yeah uh, let's just hit it up So let's first start by looking at uh, what really happened. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if this is the case, but I feel that it was due to the uh, recent Bloomberg news that uh, that stated that Chinese regulators are considering some uh, new regulations that would restrict the amount of information that uh, uh, the the Chinese companies are able to provide if they are listed into foreign exchanges. Uh, and uh, looking at it uh, together with what US is trying to do, they are actually trying to have more control over the information they are able to get. They have a new rule uh, which states that uh, in the next three years, they, uh, they should be able to audit uh, Chinese companies, uh, their financial statements, which they currently are not able to do. So it's uh, conflicting from uh, China's side. They are able to clamp it uh, more. They are trying to stop the information being shared out. Uh, on the other hand, US wants to get more and they are even pressuring to delist the companies if they are not able to audit the financial uh, financial statements. So, uh, yeah. So uh, I feel that uh, the the uh, U.S. investors are now fearing of uh, delisting of Chinese stocks, all of them really, and uh, that was the reason why there was a huge jump, especially by uh, big funds. Maybe because uh, I mean, a lot of funds are based in U.S. and if uh, there are certain uh, restrictions imposed, like what happened in January with the uh, with the telecom companies and uh, the oil giant so uh, yeah th I feel that is the reason that there was a dump and uh, there was also like Bl Bloomberg stated that this is something that China has not really enforced but they are just discussing about it so there could be changes nobody knows however uh, there's uh, a risk now uh, the risk really is existed before but it's amplified now with what uh, the path China is taking and uh, U.S. is taking so uh, that's uh, that's it. Uh, I mean, it doesn't make a difference for me or any investor that is out of a U.S. is not a U.S. resident. They are not uh, res restricted by this particular law. But uh, the thing is that uh, in the end, we are all ex uh, all affected. If U.S. investors are not able to invest, the prices will go down. Uh, there's a lot of capital that comes from US so yeah we will we will be affected indirectly but in terms of owning a company for a long term uh, as a non-resident uh, a non-US resident it doesn't bother me and it creates a buying opportunity since the company itself has not changed uh, talking specifically about JD because I mean I'm getting a lot of comments on my uh, JD uh, video uh, talking about if the, it's a buying opportunity or what happened, what caused the crash. So yeah, talking specifically about JD, their business is based in China. They have nothing to do with US or um, any other country so far, other than the few Southeast Asia company that they are trying to get into. So, I mean, JD itself as a company is not, uh, n has not changed fundamentally. Nothing has changed. The business has not changed. Uh, my investment is basically in Hong Kong. So if they get delisted in US, I don't have to be bothered about like, you know, changing the uh, ADRs to head shares or whatever of those sorts. Obviously, if that happens, the price of uh, JD will go down and that's a short term bump. But there's fundamentally no changes to the company. Hence, I will deem it as a buying opportunity for me. And that's what uh, really I did when it dropped to 270. Yeah, so I, yesterday I bought one uh, one lot of uh, uh, JD at 270 Hong Kong dollars. Um, one lot is about 50 shares. So yeah, I don't really have any cash. Uh, I mean, I only have enough cash for me to uh, live by. So what I did is I also managed my dad's uh, investment like 
he's just starting to invest i mean he's he wasn't invested into the market earlier so i'm helping him invest his money so that is where i bought uh, the lot of shares i use his money and that lot belongs to him doesn't belong to me so you can't see that uh, uh, that lot into my personal uh, portfolio so yeah but as i'm still trying to get into the market it shows my conviction to you guys uh, and i i wanted to share share that out Right, so now it's time we talk about what is expected out of JD.com's Q1 earnings, which is being released on May 19th uh, after the Hong Kong market closes and before the US market opens. Uh, talking about the revenue first, uh, it is expected to see a robust growth because uh, last year, uh, due to the pandemic, there were a lot of uh, customers that were added to the platform and uh, a lot of new customers, I mean, uh, 110 million uh, in total over the course of four uh, quarters and uh, they are uh, they are expected to increase their uh, spending on the app over time so uh, we would see uh, double takedown so they were they were firstly more customers and also the average uh, average spending per customer will increase uh, and uh, secondly there was also restrictions on travel during the lunar new year the chinese new year uh, and that would have caused a lot of uh, people to actually buy online and ship the uh, ship uh, gifts to their relatives and friends uh, to through online services or e-commerce. So uh, it is expected that there will be a, a increased spending uh, in e-commerce, and JD would have some benefits out of that. Uh, so combining the two, JD is expected to increase its revenue by uh, around thirty percent, and uh, we'll see what happens. Talking about the profits now, their uh, operating margins are expected to drop because they have ramped up their investments into their Jingxi group, uh, which has seen a lot of uh, growth uh, in terms of users in the past year, and hence they are investing more. It consists of their uh, social e-commerce, their e uh, convenience stores, and uh, lastly, their community group buying businesses. Uh, so yeah, uh, their margins will decrease, and also compared to last year when they actually cut down on their expenses because, uh, cut down on their investments rather, uh, so that they can preserve cash because of COVID. Uh, so yeah, you have a, a, a good uh, good margins as a base for uh, from last year to compare with, and then they are actually ramping up the investment. So you can expect the uh, the operating margins to drop this earning. So that won't be a surprise if it happens. Uh, so keep an eye out of out for it, uh, and let's see what ha really happens. What are the outcomes, and uh, see where where it goes. But at two hundred and seventy dollars, uh, Hong Kong dollars, JD is a very very good buy, and uh, and I won't say okay yeah. So uh, one thing I wanted to share is a lot of people asking about if it is a good buy or not, if they should buy it or not. I think it's a uh, very subjective because uh, it really depends on what they what your portfolio wants. If you are invested into Alibaba and uh, Pingdodo and then you are uh, trying to put in money into JD. I think it's not a wise idea. I think you have to see your entire portfolio, uh, and uh, then it, it's a wise decision to get into JD. I, I'm I'm buying into JD because I have no other cyclical stocks, and I see e-commerce growing and being a good uh, cyclical uh, portion. I mean, a cyclical stock into my uh, portfolio. I want. I only want to buy one. Uh, company into one sector for now uh, and keeping my uh, my portfolio concise so I picked up JD uh, and uh, yeah I think a lot of my buying decision is dependent on my portfolio instead of individual companies as well uh, it plays a big role I would say so yeah I think if you want to ask me that kind of question like if it's a good buy for you then you should actually share your uh, portfolio with me like what other stocks you have and also you should look at your other stock if like you know uh, you have more uh, um, a better opportunity in other of uh, other stocks that you have then go and buy that uh, if you already own JD right and uh, so yeah that's the thing uh, even though JD is trading at a big discount I'm, I'm not gonna buy keep on buying it what if I have another stock that is at a better uh, better position at a greater discount. I will go and buy put my money there. So a lot of uh, Of your buying decision should be uh, should be considered only after uh, Knowing your entire portfolio and uh, that is the reason I I don't like to I mean I shouldn't be the one you should be listening to in terms of uh, which stocks to buy or not uh, I'm here 
I mean to say that I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a random guy on YouTube and I'm just sharing what I am buying. And again, it is a lot to do with what my portfolio already has. So yeah, one thing is good for me is not, might not be good for you. So that's that. So, I mean, that was a huge uh, disclaimer, but whatever. Uh, that's it for now. I wanted to do a quick video, but uh, I don't know why I keep on talking about shit. Anyways, I'm making a video on Ping An right now. Uh, I just wanted to slot this in really quick uh, because I've been getting a lot of comments. So I'm going to get back to my uh, preparing my Ping, Ping An video. Uh, see you next time. Ciao.